My name is Robert Waddell. I have a beautiful wife and four kids, uh, two boys and two girls. When I was 11 and they told me I had polycystic kidneys, I was pretty distraught and I um, sat outside on the deck for a while and wouldn't talk to anybody. And so I knew somewhere down the road I would be a wife to this, you know, he would need my support as far as these health um, issues. Like renal failure usually happens fourth, fifth decade of life and uh, it, it, it hit me about 38 is when I, they put a fistula in, was preparing me for dialysis. When we found out Rob had to get a kidney, uh, he basically, he called me on the phone. He said, I just left the doctor's office and I'm, I'm looking at needing a kidney transplant soon, sooner than, you know, than we thought. Even though I've seen my mother go through it and I had family members that were on dialysis, I didn't expect it to be as tough as it, as it was actually going through it. I was actually pregnant with our youngest at the time, so that was not part of our plan at all. Did not realize that he would go start just going downhill that fast. Three times a week I was at a, a dialysis center and um, when I came home I was cold, and completely frigid. They would be in the middle of the summer and I'd have a heater on me because I was so cold. He would come home from work and his ankles and his feet would just be so swollen. When you would take his socks off, you could see the indentations and just so tired. You slowly degrade. At first, you feel pretty good, and then after you've been on it for probably about the second month, I was starting to decline physically. My biggest scare was how long would he have to wait for a kidney? I was always really scared of that. The kids were, were frightened because first I had a fistula and I had all these holes on my arms where the uh, dialysis needles would go in. It was, it was a big adjustment for them. He would just not be able to run around and be as active with them. For me, for my mother, who I've seen uh, go through that as well, it's, it's, a, it's a hollow existence. You're, you're basically just existing. Well, actually, his father had told him, read something about um, the stem cell transplant, and that it was actually here in Louisville. He even remember, you know, Dr. Illstat's name. The experiment part of it and the clinical trial part of it really scared my wife. She was she tried everything she could possibly try to talk me out of this. I just from the beginning of that said there is no way you're gonna do that because it was so new to me. You know, I hadn't for the people that I knew that had transplants, they just went and had a kidney transplant. I had not heard of doing the stem cells with it. So I was very, very leery of it. The reason I was so headstrong about doing this is that I was a relatively young man. I was 40, 41 years old. And I knew the complications from the, um, the medications that you have to be on. And I knew that, um, that the, the lifespan of a, of a kidney is, to donate a kidney or is about 20 years, I think is, is about max normally. So. I was destined to have another transplant, so I said, you know, this may be something that I want to try, even if it doesn't work. My biggest fear, honestly, was the immunosuppressant drugs. Normally, uh, you'll take, you know, it, it depends on the patient, but, you know, upwards of, you know, 10, 15, 20 pills a day. I remember him looking at me going, this is my, this is my body and this is what I want. I do not want to live on immunosuppressant drugs the rest of my life. I'm young, and he said, I really want to do this. And so finally I said, okay, look into it. Not worrying about, you know, catching this little, or drinking after the kids, did you eat that? All these things that a normal dad would, would be able to do, you, you can't do, and you're always fearful of catching something. Rob still wasn't big on telling a lot of people. But at this point, I'm like, I, I kind of felt like I was going to crumble, you know, because the kids were so young. I'm like, oh my gosh, how are we going to do this? I had confided in my friend Kim. Well, of course, she then went on and told her husband, and. She told me, she said, if he needs a kidney one day, Hugh will get tested. And you think, well, great, that's, that's nice, but when it, you never think first we'd match or he might follow through with it. It's a pretty strenuous testing, and when he was the match, we couldn't believe it. I was on dialysis for two months prior to my transplant, and the transplant happened in, at Northwestern in Chicago. He had a kidney transplant, and he also received stem cells from his donor which is the most, you know, just the really exciting part of this, this whole situation. They had to have the stem cells, obviously, for the clinical trial and, and the kidney, obviously, for the kidney transplant, but the stem cell donation was about uh, maybe a month ahead of time, uh, and, and then the, uh, the actual transplant was May 7, 2009. It was almost surrealistic to have that, my family, his family there, and us, you know, basically shaking hands. He went off to his room, I went off to my room, and my immune system was not reduced entirely. Instead, it was lower to the point that it would accept the donated stem cells. Now I have what is known as mixed chimerism. So basically, I have two immune systems, the way I understand it, in my body that are functioning right now. I remember coming home from the hospital 
after his transplant. He had his whole counter just lined up of medications. It was probably about the um, year mark afterwards that I, I basically got through all of that and uh, and I'm better than ever. I mean, literally, uh, you can ask my kids about that. <laughs> he takes like two medications today to where, you know, it'd be probably 10, you know, who knows how many he would be on. I am living proof uh, of, of this miracle that has happened to me. People still are like, are you sure he had a kidney transplant? And actually, th she thinks maybe I've, I've been fixed too good because I'm so active now. <laughs> It is amazing, the difference. I mean, now they can hardly keep up with him. Someone who gave me a kidney changed my world. And now this, the participation in this the stem cell study changed my world as well. You don't know how many people that this has touched, how many lives that this research in the stem cell study has touched with my husband being so healthy. Obviously without their funding, I wouldn't be here today uh, living proof that this study works. And my hopes are that more and more people are able to have access to this study like we did. And, um, and in order to do that, we need lots of people to support this foundation and their cause. Thank you for making a difference in my life and my family's life. <laughs>